Um, so yeah, I've just, I'm Finn. I'm one of the uh, directors of Magnitude Surveys, um, and we're an archaeological geophysics firm. And I'm just going to give you a very quick five-minute introduction to who we are and what we do. Um, so Magnitude Surveys was founded in 2015, and there were three of us, and we were based in some concrete shed on the outskirts of Bradford. And I found this photo in the old, uh, in the local newspaper of, I don't think we owned any of that equipment. We begged, borrowed and stolen everything because some local, local news agent, uh, newspaper was like, oh, there's a weird company doing something different in Bradford. Um, Doug said, I had to say when we joined fame, we joined fame in 2020, I think. Um, uh, and we grew quite rapidly. And in 2021, we were lucky enough, I think, to acquire, uh, a textile warehouse in the center of Bradford. Um, partly, Simon Mortimer came to visit us once and said, you're in Bradford, why do you not own a mill? Um, uh, so we went, we'll, we'll try own a mill. Um, so we bought this fairly derelict mill in the center of Bradford um, that could cope with all of our kind of future expansion requirements. Um, and we spent an absolute fortune doing it up. And now we're one of the largest independent providers of near surface geophysical survey for archaeological applications in the UK. Um, we have nine to ten full-time survey teams, meaning that we're collecting thousands of hectares per month, which is really weird. When I started doing this 15 years ago, a kind of 40-hectare job was really big, and now it's like, oh, we'll just do thousands, it'll be fine. Um, yeah, 54 staff. Going from three people to 54 staff in, in nine years is quite a terrifying experience, and it, you need to learn a huge amount to do that. We, I was, I'm a geophysicist, not an archaeologist, but I didn't, learn, didn't have any management training when I started doing that. I'm trying to bring those people in so that you've got the right skills and the right people in the right place to manage 54 people rather than the free mates who set up this little geophysics firm at the start. It's mad. Um, since it's the election next week, I thought I would put in a bit of light comic relief. Um, and... <laughs> I had sat down early this week and tried to work out how big we were compared to the rest of the geophysical market. Um, and these are just guesses. You know, some of these will be underrepresentation. Some of them will, might be slightly over. Um, but I don't think there's anyone else who's collecting anywhere near the level of geophysical data that we're collecting. But there are 10, 15 other firms who are doing this. So we're still actually quite small in terms of the total market. There's so much geophysics being done that even though we're capable of doing a couple of thousand hectares a month, that's only one of the solar farms we've quoted for this month. Um, and there are you know, multiple of those projects going on all the time. Um, yeah, as I was sort of saying, the scale of geophysics has changed dramatically over the last 10 years. When I started, a 40 hectare project was seen as being really big, and maybe you go, actually, we're not really gonna survey it all. Maybe we're only gonna survey patches of that. We're only gonna do 25 hectares of the 40 hectare block. And now, as I say, 2,000 hectares solar farms, yeah, we'll do total area coverage. No one sort of bats an eyelid at it. Um, and it's, it's sort of insane how much that, that's changed. Um, and it sort of shows how it's not like we've grown a lot, but also the market has grown a lot over that time. So, yeah, back in 2015 when we set out and there was just the three of us, we were only going to do a tiny amount of the geophysics being done. But it's not just that we've grown rapidly, it's also that the market has grown rapidly, and that's that sort of showing that graph, when, when I worked for the, uh, what were seen as being the biggest firms back in 2015, they topped out at kind of 25 staff, and that was seen as being a huge geophysical firm. Um, so doing this requires a huge amount of investment. Trying to get the geophysical kit to run to do that many surveys is, is really challenging. So one of the big things that we do is we have a dedicated technical operations department. They occupy the entire ground floor of our three-story mill, um, and they're repairing quad bikes, developing our own electronics, so developing our own PCBs or our own data loggers or our own G GPSs rather than buying stuff in because we need it to work in exactly the way that the geophysics kit needs it to do, rather than going, we're going to spend 15 grand on a Trimble system that we're only going to use, you know, 1,000 pounds of its sort of potential. We're going to go, actually, we want just that 1,000 pound bit because we only want it to weigh 100 grams rather than the one and a half kilos and stuff like that. And trying to, you know, really take, take it all back down to, can we build every single bit of this bespoke to do exactly what we want it to do? Yeah, so we're CNC 
parts. We've just required a 3D printer that prints carbon fiber and stuff like that. So all these parts that we used to have to sort of buy and bodge, now we're able to produce these mechanically really strong stable parts that are non-magnetic, which is, you know, no one else is going to make those. Um, and that's, that's a real change. Um, and that means that we have these kind of survey systems where we have one system and you put it on your back and then you get to another field and you throw some wheels on it and then you get to another field and you go, oh yeah, we're allowed to use the quad bike in this field. So we have exactly the same bit of kit. It all fits in one van and someone, we send up to a field and we can't get in with the ATV. Oh, we just throw the backpack on. Oh, we're now going to the next field. Yeah, it's all there. Five minutes changeover. Um, and we're not having to kind of ship parts or ship different kit around. Um, everyone knows what a quad bike looks like. Everyone knows what, what it's like to drive around in a quad bike on a, on a big field. Um, so magnetometry is obviously the, the biggest bit of geophysics in the UK. Um, it's probably 98% of our work um, by value. Um, but that doesn't mean that we only do magnetometry. So we'll have G we've got GPR kit in-house, we've got UAV kit in-house, we've got Earth resistance kit in-house. Every bit of geophysics that anyone wants to do archaeologically, we own the kit already. We're not having to go out to some kind of rental company and working about whether they've got the kit available for when your project needs to go, stuff like that. Um, and then finally, because I know this is already running on a little bit, I've got one thing that I would like to pose as a question and maybe give people can go away and think about. Um, and it's about digital data archiving. Um, archiving data is phenomenally expensive um, compared to the cost of doing geophysics. Um, yet it's almost entirely impenetrable. You spend 10 grand to archive a project and no one's ever actually going to find that project. Um, and are we doing that right? Can we do that in a better way that maybe it still costs the same, but is more available? But then on the other side of that, we've just completed uh, a massive solar farm that was then gazumped by a significant reservoir. Um, so the solar company paid a fortune to do some geophysics. And we were fortunate enough that we were then commissioned by the reservoir firm to do some geophysics. And we went, oh, we've already surveyed all this. And the reservoir firm went, oh, well, that's great. We can just have all the data for free then, can't we? Because you've already archived it. Um, obviously, the solar farm wasn't very happy about that, but it doesn't really, that's, it creates this really kind of complex sort of position for us when we should be archiving all of our data, we should be making it all available, but there are lots of places where that doesn't work. And I think that as a, as a collective, we need to work out how, how we can go about doing that um, in, a, in a fair way for everyone. And, uh, that's me. Thank you very much.